What if you could fly first class for less than $100? Well, normally a first class flight will cost you thousands of dollars, but somehow I was able to get an insanely cheap eight hour flight on Canada's best airline, Air Canada. So stick around because I'm gonna show you just how crazy this entire experience actually is. Ever since I was a little kid, it has literally been my dream to fly first class. Normally a seat like this costs upwards of $7,000, but the price that I got was absolutely insane. Normally when I do my flights, I check in online, but apparently in person, because I'm flying first class, it is a special check-in process. So we're gonna head there right now to see what it's like before heading to the first class lounge, then finally the flight. I am incredibly excited. And make sure you stick around until later in the video where I'll tell you exactly how much I ended up paying for this. But in the meantime, I made my way from the airport hotel into the main terminal in order to experience the first class check-in process. Morning. Hi, how are you? Good. Sir. Pretty good. This yep. Can you check in the bag? Uh, no, just to carry on. Just carry on? Yep. Toronto is the final destination? Yep. Do you know where the lounge here is in Frankfurt? That way and to the left, I think. By B42, you take the escalator upstairs, there's the Maple Leaf lounge. Okay, perfect, thank you. The gate will be today by B46. B46? Okay, perfect. And A20 should be the boarding, but the colleagues in the lounge can tell you. Okay. Perfect. Thank you so much. You too. Well, that check-in was definitely way faster than the other line. But now that we officially have the first class ticket, let's head through security and check out the Maple Leaf Lounge. And at this point, after having the ticket in my hand, the excitement was starting to kick in. So I made my way through the airport, but that is when I got stuck in one of the busiest customs lines I have ever seen. It turns out that first class and priority security doesn't get you away from being double inspected. Yet again, I got my bags searched and a pat down. So we're gonna have to add a point to the tally. I also feel terrible because there was an hour and a half customs line and I literally just skipped to the front. Because I'm young, I just pretended I was with a family. And normally I would never do something like this, but we need to review the lounge. So let's head there now and check it out. And just like my friend told me earlier, after taking a quick escalator ride up a floor, I had arrived at the Air Canada Maple Leaf Lounge. Unlike some of the other lounges I've been to, this is exclusive for first class and high ranking rewards members. And since it is a branded airline lounge, I hope it is good. Right off the bat, I was greeted with a beautiful view overlooking the airport where I was able to watch planes take off and arriving at the gate. But now it was time to get myself some breakfast. The first thing that caught my eye was the display of sandwiches, various meats, cheeses, and yogurt, but this definitely wasn't all because the sweets were just around the corner. For the main breakfast meal today, guests had the choice of sausages, scrambled eggs, and tons of pastries like croissants, cinnamon rolls, pretzels, and since it's Air Canada, pancakes with a side of spreads and maple syrup. As for the drinks, this lounge had a coffee machine which made pretty much anything, tons of juices, soft beverages, expensive wine, and rosé accompanied with every type of hard liquor you could possibly think of. And since I was in Frank Frankfurt, obviously there was beer on tap. Obviously, I don't fly first class often, so I decided to load up on tons of food and drinks, and I have to say the meal was absolutely delicious. Looking around the lounge, I noticed how high-end things were and the type of people inside, which made me wonder how they could afford this with how expensive everything is these days. But one guy in the business lounge let me in on a secret. He said, if you think luxury travelers and CEOs are letting their money waste away in savings accounts, think again. With today's sponsor, Masterworks, not only do they help me afford these crazy videos, but they also help you diversify your portfolio with an exclusive high value, low correlation asset, contemporary art, just like the other CEOs. Masterworks has proven to deliver real results, distributing net returns of over $45 million in art sales to everyday investors. Thanks to them, anyone can invest in paintings from the legends like Banksy, Picasso, and much more. And with 14 exits complete and every single one returning profit to the users, soon we can all be flying first class. If you want to skip out on the waitlist and have priority access to Masterworks and the paintings which sell out in minutes, make sure you go and click the link down in the description. But now it's time to get back to the video and catch my first class flight. So overall, I'm gonna have to give that lounge a solid nine out of 10. I have never been into a dedicated airline first class lounge before, but the food was amazing. The staff was nice. All the finishings were beautiful. And overall, it was a great experience. But anyways, while we wait for our flight, I thought I'd come outside here on the balcony just so I could tell you guys a little bit more about Air Canada, some of the reviews and things that people have said about them. Just so you guys know what we could expect. Right off the bat, Air Canada has the fifth best first class 
class in all of the Americas, consistently getting good reviews. According to Skytrax, they're rated 4 out of 5 stars. Business class gave them a rating of 8.5 out of 10. And to make things even better, apparently over the next few years, they're going to be upgrading it even further. So I am super excited to finally be checking them out, considering I haven't even flown them since the pandemic. And on top of that, I've never flown their first class before. So let's head down to the gate and experience it together for the very first time. It's actually perfect timing too, because I just got a text saying boarding has now begun. After making it down to the gate, I noticed it was insanely busy. And normally this would be an issue, but since I was flying what Air Canada calls their signature class, I was able to walk to the very front of the line and skip everyone. Thank you. Sorry about that. Boarding pass? Yep. There you go. Thank you, sir. Sorry about that. No, it's okay. It's fine. Perfect. Have a good day. Thank you. Good morning. Sir. Perfect. Thank you. Now that I scanned my boarding pass, I got my first glimpse of the Boeing 777 I'd be flying on today. And as I got closer to the plane, I got more and more excited for what was soon to come. Here we go. Finally time for first class. Is it nice? Yep. Thank you. It's kind of funny. I'm definitely the youngest person in here. And I kind of don't feel like I belong, but oh well. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Good. How are you? Good. 6K. 6K. That's fine. Down to your seat. Yeah. Thank you. Oh. I'll let you sneak around there. Sorry about that. No For today's flight, I was in seat 6K, which is certainly the most insane airplane seat I will have ever sat in before. And as soon as I got seated, I was immediately served with a glass of champagne and greeted with a menu. Good morning. Thank Scott, you. Welcome. Thank you. The way first class generally works is that you order your primary meal right at the beginning of the flight. And after opening the menu, I was greeted with all of the information about their in-flight dining. For the appetizers, I'd be getting halibut and smoked salmon with fresh greens and warm bread. But for the main course, I had the choice of beef filet, roasted chicken, salmon, and ricola filled pasta before having chocolate crumble cake for dessert. What do you mean course what can I offer you? Would I be able to do the beef filet? Sure. Thank you. I was completely shocked that they knew my name, but what was even crazier was the drink menu because there were so many different types of expensive wines and alcohols to choose from, but I'll show you what I got in just a bit. Since my orders had all been taken, I decided to explore my seat where I noticed an amenities kit that I would definitely be needing to go through. The next thing I noticed was the over-ear headphones provided, which I'd be able to use for the entire duration of the flight. A remote to control the in-flight entertainment, full-size power outlets, USB ports, and headphone jacks, multiple windows all to myself, seat controls where I could fully customize everything, tons of room for storage, over-the-shoulder reading lights, and a bunch more that I'll be showing you in just a bit. But I think it's time we go through that amenities kit I was telling you about earlier. All right, so in the bed they gave us, we have a super nice comfy pair of socks, an eye mask for sleeping. We got a bar of soap for washing your hands. We got a microfiber cloth if you have glasses, sunglasses, or anything like that you want to clean. We got a dental kit which comes with a toothbrush, toothpaste, and I think floss. And finally, we got a pair of earplugs. This is so much different from economy. If I could afford to fly this all the time, I definitely would. But you know what? Now I think it's time we check out one of the most exciting features of this seat, which is the in-flight entertainment. And I will admit, I wish the remote was wireless instead of having this weird cable making it slightly clunky to use. From the remote, I was able to do a bunch of things, like the default screen controls, but I could also do other things too, like activating the overhead reading lamps. But that's when I noticed an issue. For some reason, my screen got stuck on welcome and appeared to be frozen for about 10 minutes, which definitely isn't normal. But luckily, the cabin crew was nice enough to start a system reset. But even this process was taking quite a while, and soon enough, we began pushing back from the gate. So I need to wait and see if my TV was going to be working for this flight or not. Today, I'm on an eight and a half hour flight from Frankfurt, Germany, all the way to Toronto. So we'll have plenty of time in first class. And thankfully, as I was enjoying my seat and looking at all of the insane planes, my TV began to work just in time for us to make it to the runway and begin taking off. Now that I was in the air, I decided to check out the entertainment some more because look how big this screen is. Air Canada had tons of different movies and TV shows to choose from, and I was honestly impressed at how quick and responsive the screen was, especially compared to economy, which is generally quite laggy. But one complaint I do have is that they promote Wi-Fi, but even flying first class, we needed to pay, which is ridiculous. Anyways, now that we had reached altitude, a flight attendant came around with a hot towel, which was definitely relaxing, but it was soon going to be time for the the meal. 
Hi there, Chef here. Thank you. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Thank you. Awesome, thank you so much. I think the crew knows I'm filming, so I think they're a little bit sussed out. But I mean, I'm allowed to do it. We'll see how this goes. Starting things off, I got Coke, water, and both white wines, which included a Canadian Chardonnay and an Italian Passerina, along with some nuts. Now, I'm not gonna pretend like I'm a wine expert here, but both were absolutely delicious. But I definitely thought the Italian was just a bit better, but now it was time for the appetizer. Served in a beautiful arrangement, there was a plate for salmon and halibut, another for the garlic bread, and finally a bowl of salad. And since this was a business class flight, we were given proper metal cutlery, which is awesome compared to the plastic stuff you get back in economy. Now, I don't know if the food tasted better just because it's first class, but overall, I really enjoyed it. And considering I am an extremely picky eater, this is saying something. But soon after finishing the appetizer, I was immediately brought the main dish. Today, I ordered the beef filet with mashed potatoes and veggies and I've never had a meal like this on any flight before but it was genuinely some of the best beef I have ever had but after destroying it for dessert I was served a chocolate crumble cake I am a huge fan of chocolate so I was really looking forward to this and I can confirm it was just as rich and delicious as it looked now after finishing my meal, I decided to make my way towards the bathroom to check it out. Inside was a nice maple leaf design since it's Air Canada and the headroom was also quite good. As for the rest of the bathroom, it was quite clean with all of the usual amenities, but there was also a window where you could look at the world while doing your business. Leaving the bathroom, I decided to check out the snack bar where I could grab anything at any time, but I decided to get some dark chocolate and when I went back to my seat, I noticed the cabin had been dimmed for sleeping. Now one of the things I wasn't expecting is them shutting off all the lights during the flight. Last year when I flew home from Europe in economy, they never did that. But in first class, they dimmed all of the lights so everyone could sleep. Now beside me on this little panel, I have a light so I can tap it and it'll turn on. But obviously I wasn't using that. But it is still super cool and I have never experienced this before. Also, another thing I should probably mention is I got extremely lucky with my seating. The seat right in front of me is empty and the one beside me is empty, meaning I could pretty much film whatever I want and I'm not gonna bother anybody. But after this, I am definitely gonna have to review some more first class airlines because this is life changing. But guess what? Things got even crazier because I just discovered that the seat came in with a built-in massage feature. And on top of that, I was also able to change all of the dimensions of the headrest and lumbar support, which is insane to experience in an airline seat. Another thing I found on the panel was that I could also use the touchpad to change the way that the seat was oriented. But if I wanted to fully lay flat, all I had to do was hold the physical button itself. This wasn't all though, because I could also set my seat to do not disturb, call the flight attendants, or have them wake me up for food, which is exactly what I was going to do because while watching my movie, I started to get quite tired and before I knew it, I had passed out. Good morning. Alright, so we are about 75% way through the flight right now, and it is incredible. Obviously, this is my first time flying business or first class, whatever you want to call it, but it was unreal. I have never been so comfortable on a flight before. I'm the kind of person that can never sleep on planes, but somehow I actually got like two or three hours. And then besides that, I was pretty much just laying down watching movies the entire time. Now, in terms of the seat, at the beginning of the flight, they gave us a mattress cover, a blanket, and a pillow. I used the blanket for a bit, but it's kind of warm in here, so I decided to take it off. And honestly, in my opinion, I think the seat is comfy enough without the mattress cover, so I didn't really bother. But it is incredibly awesome to have a full-size pillow, especially just watching movies and when you're laying down. But anyways, within the next hour, I think the light's going to be coming on, and they're going to start waking people up. And at that point, the second round of food is supposed to be coming, and I am extremely excited to try it. And little did I know, the lights ended up coming on sooner than expected, and now it was time for the light snack. Similar to the appetizers, everything was nicely arranged, featuring a plate of pasta and various meats, a bun with butter, and fresh fruits. And overall, it was quite delicious, but I do wish it was a warm meal rather than a cool one. So now at this point, I'm sure you guys are probably wondering the big question. How much did I actually end up paying for this entire experience? Well, like I said earlier, normally a seat like this would cost you $7,000 to $10,000, which is an insane amount of money. But for this seat today, I paid 55,000 aeroplan points and I think $100 on top of it. So actual cost value was probably around $600, $650. And to put that into perspective, that is cheaper than an economy seat on this exact 
Amexin flight. Now the way that I got these points was through my travel credit card and I was able to transfer my Amex points into Aeroplan points and all the points that I did get was through a sign up bonus. And if you guys are interested in the credit card that I used that got me all the points to fund this trip, I put a link down in the description so you guys can check it out for yourself. But now there's only about 30 minutes left in this flight so let's enjoy the rest of the first class experience while we still can. At this point, everyone was awake and preparing for landing as we were now quickly approaching Toronto. Just before descending, I took a final look around the cabin to show you guys what everything looked like. And before I knew it, we were coming down through the clouds and coming in for landing. So overall, I highly recommend this to anyone who is able to afford it with points or money. And I'm gonna have to give Air Canada Signature Class a solid nine out of 10. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure you check out another one of my videos where I flew Delta's Domestic Business Class.